Welcome to Immerse Beginnings, reading for week one, day four. Then the men got up from their meal and looked out toward Sodom. As they left, Abraham went with them to send them on their way. Should I hide my plan from Abraham? The Lord asked. For Abraham will certainly become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth will be blessed through him. I have singled him out so that he will direct his sons and their families to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. Then I will do for Abraham all that I have promised. So the Lord told Abraham, I have heard a great outcry from Sodom and Gomorrah because their sin is so flagrant. I am going down to see if their actions are as wicked as I have heard. If not, I want to know. The other men turned and headed toward Sodom, but the Lord remained with Abraham. Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away both the righteous and the wicked? Suppose you find fifty righteous people living there in the city. Will you still sweep it away and not spare it for their sakes? Surely you wouldn't do such a thing, destroying the righteous along with the wicked. Why, you would be treating the righteous and the wicked exactly the same. Surely you wouldn't do that. Should not the judge of all the earth do what is right? And the Lord replied, If I find fifty righteous people in Sodom, I will spare the entire city for their sake. Then Abraham spoke again, Since I have begun, let me speak further to my Lord, even though I am but dust and ashes. Suppose there are only forty-five righteous people, rather than fifty. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And the Lord said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five righteous people there. Then Abraham pressed his request further. Suppose there are only forty. And the Lord replied, I will not destroy it for the sake of the forty. Please don't be angry, my Lord, Abraham pleaded. Let me speak. Suppose only thirty righteous people are found. And the Lord replied, I will not destroy it if I find thirty. Then Abraham said, Since I have dared to speak to the Lord, let me continue. Suppose there are only twenty. And the Lord replied, Then I will not destroy it for the sake of the twenty. Finally Abraham said, Lord, please don't be angry with me if I speak one more time. Suppose only ten are found there. And the Lord replied, Then I will not destroy it for the sake of the ten. When the Lord had finished his conversation with Abraham, he went on his way, and Abraham returned to his tent. That evening the two angels came to the entrance of the city of Sodom. Lot was sitting there, and when he saw them, he stood up to meet them. Then he welcomed them and bowed with his face to the ground. My lords, he said, come to my home to wash your feet and be my guests for the night. You may then get up early in the morning and be on your way again. Oh no, they replied, we'll just spend the night out here in the city square. But Lot insisted, so at last they went home with him. Lot prepared a feast for them, complete with fresh bread made without yeast, and they ate. But before they retired for the night, all the men of Sodom, young and old, came from all over the city and surrounded the house. They shouted to Lot, Where are the men who came to spend the night with you? Bring them out to us, so we can have sex with them. So Lot stepped outside to talk to them, shutting the door behind him. Please, my brothers, he begged, don't do such a wicked thing. Look, I have two virgin daughters. Let me bring them out to you, and you can do with them as you wish. But please leave these men alone, for they are my guests and are under my protection. Stand back, they shouted. This fellow came to town as an outsider, and now he's acting like our judge. We'll treat you far worse than those other men. And they lunged toward Lot to break down the door. But the two angels reached out, pulled Lot into the house, and bolted the door. Then they blinded all the men, young and old, who were at the door of the house, so they gave up trying to get inside. Meanwhile, the angels questioned Lot. Do you have any other relatives here in the city? They asked. Get them out of this place, your sons-in-law, sons, daughters, or anyone else, for we are about to destroy this city completely. The outcry against this place is so great it has reached the Lord, and he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot rushed out to tell his daughter's fiancés. 
Quick, get out of the city. The Lord is about to destroy it. But the young man thought he was only joking. At dawn the next morning, the angels became insistent. Hurry, they said to Lot. Take your wife and your two daughters who are here. Get out right now, or you will be swept away in the destruction of the city. When Lot still hesitated, the angels seized his hand and the hands of his wife and two daughters and rushed them to safety outside the city, for the Lord was merciful. When they were safely out of the city, one of the angels ordered, Run for your lives, and don't look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the mountains, or you will be swept away. Oh no, my lord, Lot begged. You have been so gracious to me and saved my life, and you have shown such great kindness. But I cannot go to the mountains. Disaster would catch up to me there, and I would soon die. See, there is a small village nearby. Please let me go there instead. Don't you see how small it is? Then my life will be saved. All right, the angel said. I will grant your request. I will not destroy the little village. But hurry, escape to it, for I can do nothing until you arrive there. This explains why that village was known as Zoar, which means little place. Lot reached the village just as the sun was rising over the horizon. Then the Lord rained down fire and burning sulfur from the sky on Sodom and Gomorrah. He utterly destroyed them, along with the other cities and villages of the plain, wiping out all the people and every bit of vegetation. But Lot's wife looked back as she was following behind him, and she turned into a pillar of salt. Abraham got up early that morning and hurried out to the place where he had stood in the Lord's presence. He looked out across the plain toward Sodom and Gomorrah and watched as columns of smoke rose from the cities like smoke from a furnace. But God had listened to Abraham's request and kept Lot safe, removing him from the disaster that engulfed the cities on the plain. Afterward, Lot left Zoar because he was afraid of the people there, and he went to live in a cave in the mountains with his two daughters. One day the older daughter said to her sister, There are no men left anywhere in this entire area, so we can't get married like everyone else, and our father will soon be too old to have children. Come, let's get him drunk with wine, and then we will have sex with him. That way we will preserve our family line through our father. So that night they got him drunk with wine, and the older daughter went in and had intercourse with her father. He was unaware of her lying down or getting up again. The next morning the older daughter said to her younger sister, I had sex with our father last night. Let's get him drunk with wine again tonight, and you go in and have sex with him. That way we will preserve our family line through our father. So that night they got him drunk with wine again, and the younger daughter went in and had intercourse with him. As before, he was unaware of her lying down or getting up again. As a result, both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their own father. When the older daughter gave birth to a son, she named him Moab. He became the ancestor of the nation now known as the Moabites. When the younger daughter gave birth to a son, she named him Ben-Ammi. He became the ancestor of the nation now known as the Ammonites. Abraham moved south to the Negev and lived for a while between Kadesh and Shur, and then he moved on to Gerar. While living there as a foreigner, Abraham introduced his wife, Sarah, by saying, She is my sister. So King Abimelech of Gerar sent for Sarah, and had her brought to him at his palace. But that night God came to Abimelech in a dream and told him, You are a dead man, for that woman you have taken is already married. But Abimelech had not slept with her yet. So he said, Lord, will you destroy an innocent nation? Didn't Abraham tell me she is my sister? And she herself said, Yes, he is my brother. I acted in complete innocence. My hands are clean. In the dream God responded, Yes, I know you are innocent. That's why I kept you from sinning against me, and why I did not let you touch her. Now return the woman to her husband, and he will pray for you, for he is a prophet. Then you will live. But if you don't return her to him, you can be sure that you and all your people will die. 
Abimelech got up early the next morning and quickly called all his servants together. When he told them what had happened, his men were terrified. Then Abimelech called for Abraham. What have you done to us? he demanded. What crime have I committed that deserves treatment like this, making me and my kingdom guilty of this great sin? No one should ever do what you have done, whatever possessed you to do such a thing. Abraham replied, I thought this is a godless place. They will want my wife and will kill me to get her. And she really is my sister, for we both have the same father, but different mothers. And I married her. When God called me to leave my father's home and to travel from place to place, I told her, do me a favor. Wherever we go, tell the people that I am your brother. Then Abimelech took some of his sheep and goats, cattle and male and female servants, and he presented them to Abraham. He also returned his wife, Sarah, to him. Then Abimelech said, Look over my land and choose any place where you would like to live. And he said to Sarah, Look, I am giving your brother one thousand pieces of silver in the presence of all these witnesses. This is to compensate you for any wrong I may have done to you. This will settle any claim against me, and your reputation is cleared. Then Abraham prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech, his wife, and his female servants, so they could have children. For the Lord had caused all the women to be infertile because of what happened with Abraham's wife, Sarah. The Lord kept his word and did for Sarah exactly what he had promised. She became pregnant, and she gave birth to a son for Abraham in his old age. This happened at just the time God had said it would. And Abraham named their son Isaac. Eight days after Isaac was born, Abraham circumcised him as God had commanded. Abraham was one hundred years old when Isaac was born. And Sarah declared, God has brought me laughter. All who hear about this will laugh with me. Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse a baby? Yet I have given Abraham a son in his old age. When Isaac grew up and was about to be weaned, Abraham prepared a huge feast to celebrate the occasion. But Sarah saw Ishmael, the son of Abraham, and her Egyptian servant Hagar, making fun of her son, Isaac. So she turned to Abraham and demanded, Get rid of that slave woman and her son. He is not going to share the inheritance with my son, Isaac. I won't have it. This upset Abraham very much, because Ishmael was his son. But God told Abraham, Do not be upset over the boy and your servant. Do whatever Sarah tells you. For Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. But I will also make a nation of the descendants of Hagar's son, because he is your son too. So Abraham got up early the next morning, prepared food and a container of water, and strapped them on Hagar's shoulders. Then he sent her away with their son, and she wandered aimlessly in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water was gone, she put the boy in the shade of a bush. Then she went and sat down by herself about a hundred yards away. I don't want to watch the boy die, she said, as she burst into tears. But God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven, Hagar, what's wrong? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Go to him and comfort him, for I will make a great nation from his descendants. Then God opened Hagar's eyes, and she saw a well full of water. She quickly filled her water container and gave the boy a drink. And God was with the boy as he grew up in the wilderness. He became a skillful archer, and he settled in the wilderness of Paran. His mother arranged for him to marry a woman from the land of Egypt. About this time, Abimelech came with Phicol, his army commander, to visit Abraham. God is obviously with you, helping you in everything you do, Abimelech said. Swear to me in God's name that you will never deceive me, my children, or any of my descendants. I have been loyal to you, so now swear that you will be loyal to me and to this country where you are living as a foreigner. Abraham replied, Yes, I swear to it. Then Abraham complained to Abimelech about a well that Abimelech's servants had taken by force from Abraham's servants. This is the first I've heard of it, Abimelech answered. 
I have no idea who is responsible. You have never complained about this before. Abraham then gave some of his sheep, goats, and cattle to Abimelech, and they made a treaty. But Abraham also took seven additional female lambs and set them off by themselves. Abimelech asked, Why have you set these seven apart from the others? Abraham replied, Please accept these seven lambs to show your agreement that I dug this well. Then he named the place Beersheba, which means well of the oath, because that was where they had sworn the oath. After making their covenant at Beersheba, Abimelech left with Phicol, the commander of his army, and they returned home to the land of the Philistines. Then Abraham planted a tamarisk tree at Beersheba, and there he worshipped the Lord, the Eternal God. And Abraham lived as a foreigner in Philistine country for a long time. Some time later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, here I am. Take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. The next morning Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him, along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped wood for a fire for a burnt offering, and set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day of their journey, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Stay here with the donkey, Abraham told the servants. The boy and I will travel a little farther. We will worship there, and then we will come right back. So Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them walked on together, Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Father? Yes, my son. Abraham replied, We have the fire and the wood, the boy said, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son, Abraham answered, and they both walked on together. When they arrived at the place where God had told him to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son, Isaac, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. At that moment the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Abraham replied, here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do not hurt him in any way, for now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its horns in a thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. Abraham named the place Yahweh Yira, which means the Lord will provide. To this day, people still use that name as a proverb. On the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called again to Abraham from heaven, this is what the Lord says. Because you have obeyed me and have not withheld even your son, your only son, I swear by my own name that I will certainly bless you. I will multiply your descendants beyond number, like the stars and the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will conquer the cities of their enemies, and through your descendants all the nations of the earth will be blessed, all because you have obeyed me. Then they returned to the servants and traveled back to Beersheba, where Abraham continued to live. Soon after this, Abraham heard that Milcah, his brother Nahor's wife, had borne Nahor eight sons. The oldest was named Uz, the next oldest was Buzz, followed by Kemuel, the ancestor of the Arameans, Kesed, Hazo, Pildash, Jidlaf, and Bethuel. Bethuel became the father of Rebekah. In addition to these eight sons from Milcah, Nahor had four other children from his concubine, Ruma. Their names were Teba, Geham, Tehash, and Maacah. When Sarah was 127 years old, she died at Kiriath Erba, now called Hebron, in the land of Canaan. 
There Abraham mourned and wept for her. Then leaving her body, he said to the Hittite elders, Here I am, a stranger and a foreigner among you. Please sell me a piece of land so I can give my wife a proper burial. The Hittites replied to Abraham, Listen, my lord, you are an honored prince among us. Choose the finest of our tombs and bury her there. No one here will refuse to help you in this way. Then Abraham bowed low before the Hittites and said, Since you are willing to help me in this way, be so kind as to ask Ephron, son of Zohar, to let me buy his cave at Machpelah, down at the end of his field. I will pay the full price in the presence of witnesses, so I will have a permanent burial place for my family. Ephron was sitting there among the others, and he answered Abraham as the others listened, speaking publicly before all the Hittite elders of the town. No, my lord, he said to Abraham, please listen to me. I will give you the field and the cave. Here in the presence of my people, I give it to you. Go and bury your dead. Abraham again bowed low before the citizens of the land, and he replied to Ephron as everyone listened. No, listen to me. I will buy it from you. Let me pay the full price for the field so I can bury my dead there. Ephron answered Abraham, My lord, please listen to me. The land is worth four hundred pieces of silver. But what is that between friends? Go ahead and bury your dead. So Abraham agreed to Ephron's price and paid the amount he had suggested, four hundred pieces of silver, weighed according to the market standard. The Hittite elders witnessed the transaction. So Abraham bought the plot of land belonging to Ephron at Machpelah near Mamre, this included the field itself, the cave that was in it, and all the surrounding trees. It was transferred to Abraham as his permanent possession in the presence of the Hittite elders at the city gate. Then Abraham buried his wife Sarah there in Canaan, in the cave of Machpelah, near Mamre, also called Hebron. So the field and the cave were transferred from the Hittites to Abraham for use as a permanent burial place. Abraham was now a very old man, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. One day Abraham said to his oldest servant, the man in charge of his household, Take an oath by putting your hand under my thigh. Swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, that you will not allow my son to marry one of these local Canaanite women. Go instead to my homeland, to my relatives, and find a wife there for my son Isaac. The servant asked, but what if I can't find a young woman who is willing to travel so far from home? Should I then take Isaac there to live among your relatives in the land you came from? No, Abraham responded. Be careful never to take my son there. For the Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and my native land, solemnly promised to give this land to my descendants. He will send his angel ahead of you, and he will see to it that you find a wife there for my son. If she is unwilling to come back with you, then you are free from this oath of mine. But under no circumstances are you to take my son there. So the servant took an oath by putting his hand under the thigh of his master Abraham. He swore to follow Abraham's instructions. Then he loaded ten of Abraham's camels with all kinds of expensive gifts from his master, and he traveled to distant Aram Neharaim, there he went to the town where Abraham's brother Nahor had settled. He made the camels kneel beside a well just outside the town. It was evening, and the women were coming out to draw water. O Lord, God of my master, Abraham, he prayed, please give me success today and show unfailing love to my master Abraham. See, I am standing here beside this spring, and the young women of the town are coming out to draw water. This is my request. I will ask one of them, Please give me a drink from your jug. If she says, Yes, have a drink, and I will water your camels too. Let her be the one you have selected as Isaac's wife. This is how I will know that you have shown unfailing love to my master. Before he had finished praying, he saw a young woman named Rebecca coming out with her water jug on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, who was the son of Abraham's brother, Nahor, and his wife, Milcah. Rebekah was very beautiful and old enough to be married, but she was still a virgin. 
She went down to the spring, filled her jug, and came up again. Running over to her, the servant said, Please give me a little drink of water from your jug. Yes, my lord, she answered. Have a drink. And she quickly lowered her jug from her shoulder and gave him a drink. When she had given him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels, too, until they have had enough to drink. So she quickly emptied her jug into the watering trough and ran back to the well to draw water for all his camels. The servant watched her in silence, wondering whether or not the Lord had given him success in his mission. Then at last, when the camels had finished drinking, he took out a gold ring for her nose and two large gold bracelets for her wrists. Whose daughter are you? he asked. And please tell me, would your father have any room to put us up for the night? I am the daughter of Bethuel, she replied. My grandparents are Nahor and Milcah. Yes, we have plenty of straw and feed for the camels, and we have room for guests. The man bowed low and worshipped the Lord. Praise the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, he said. The Lord has shown unfailing love and faithfulness to my master, for he has led me straight to my master's relatives. The young woman ran home to tell her family everything that had happened. Now Rebecca had a brother named Laban, who ran out to meet the man at the spring. He had seen the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's wrists, and had heard Rebecca tell what the man had said. So he rushed out to the spring, where the man was still standing beside his camels. Laban said to him, Come and stay with us, you who are blessed by the Lord. Why are you standing here outside the town, when I have a room all ready for you, and a place prepared for the camels? So the man went home with Laban, and Laban unloaded the camels, gave him straw for their bedding, fed them, and provided water for the man and the camel drivers to wash their feet. Then food was served. But Abraham's servant said, I don't want to eat until I have told you why I have come. All right, Laban said, tell us. I am Abraham's servant, he explained, and the Lord has greatly blessed my master. He has become a wealthy man. The Lord has given him flocks of sheep and goats, herds of cattle, a fortune in silver and gold, and many male and female servants and camels and donkeys. When Sarah, my master's wife, was very old, she gave birth to my master's son, and my master has given him everything he owns. And my master made me take an oath. He said, do not allow my son to marry one of these local Canaanite women. Go instead to my father's house, to my relatives, and find a wife there for my son. But I said to my master, What if I can't find a young woman who is willing to go back with me? He responded, The Lord in whose presence I have lived will send his angel with you and will make your mission successful. Yes, you must find a wife for my son from among my relatives, from my father's family then you will have fulfilled your obligation. But if you go to my relatives and they refuse to let her go with you, you will be free from my oath. So today when I came to the spring, I prayed this prayer. O Lord God of my master Abraham, please give me success on this mission. See, I am standing here beside this spring. This is my request. When a young woman comes to draw water, I will say to her, Please give me a little drink of water from your jug. If she says, yes, have a drink, and I will draw water for your camels, too, let her be the one you have selected to be the wife of my master's son. Before I had finished praying in my heart, I saw Rebecca coming out with her water jug on her shoulder. She went down to the spring and drew water. So I said to her, please give me a drink. She quickly lowered her jug from her shoulder and said, yes, have a drink, and I will water your camels, too. So I drank, and then she watered the camels. Then I asked, Whose daughter are you? She replied, I am the daughter of Bethuel, and my grandparents are Nahor and Milcah. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her wrists. Then I bowed low and worshipped the Lord. I praised the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, because he had led me straight to my master's niece to be his son's wife. So tell me, Will you or won't you show unfailing love and faithfulness to my master? Please tell me yes or no, and then I'll know what to do next. Then Laban and Bethuel replied, The Lord has obviously brought you here, 
so there is nothing we can say. Here is Rebecca. Take her and go. Yes, let her be the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has directed. When Abraham's servant heard their answer, he bowed down to the ground and worshipped the Lord. Then he brought out silver and gold jewelry and clothing and presented them to Rebekah. He also gave expensive presents to her brother and mother. Then they ate their meal, and the servant and the man with him stayed there overnight. But early the next morning, Abraham's servant said, Send me back to my master. But we want Rebekah to stay with us at least ten days, her brother and mother said. Then she can go. But he said, Don't delay me. The Lord has made my mission successful. Now send me back so I can return to my master. Well, they said, We'll call Rebekah and ask her what she thinks. So they called Rebekah. Are you willing to go with this man? They asked her. And she replied, Yes, I will go. So they said goodbye to Rebekah and sent her away with Abraham's servant and his men. The woman who had been Rebekah's childhood nurse went along with her. They gave her this blessing as she parted. Our sister, may you become the mother of many millions. May your descendants be strong and conquer the cities of their enemies. Then Rebekah and her servant girls mounted the camels and followed the man. So Abraham's servant took Rebekah and went on his way. Meanwhile, Isaac, whose home was in the Negev, had returned from Beer Lahairoi. One evening, as he was walking and meditating in the fields, he looked up and saw the camels coming. When Rebekah looked up and saw Isaac, she quickly dismounted from her camel. Who is that man walking through the fields to meet us? She asked the servant. And he replied, It is my master. So Rebekah covered her face with her veil. Then the servant told Isaac everything he had done. And Isaac brought Rebekah into his mother Sarah's tent, and she became his wife. He loved her deeply, and she was a special comfort to him after the death of his mother. Abraham married another wife, whose name was Keturah. She gave birth to Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Jokshan was the father of Sheba and Dedan. Dedan's descendants were the Asherites, Letushites, and Leomites. Midian's sons were Ephah, Epher, Hanak, Abida, and Aldea. These were all descendants of Abraham through Keturah. Abraham gave everything he owned to his son Isaac. But before he died, he gave gifts to the sons of his concubines and sent them off to a land in the east, away from Isaac. Abraham lived for 175 years, and he died at a ripe old age, having lived a long and satisfying life. He breathed his last and joined his ancestors in death. His sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah near Mamre, in the field of Ephron, son of Zohar the Hittite. This was the field Abraham had purchased from the Hittites and where he had buried his wife Sarah. After Abraham's death, God blessed his son Isaac, who settled near Beer Lahairoi in the Negev. This concludes today's Immerse Reading Experience. Thank you for joining us.